Our guest on This is America is Manuel Sager. He's ambassador from Switzerland to the United States. He's the former head of the political affairs division of Switzerland's Department of Foreign Affairs and holds law degrees from Duke University and the University of Zurich. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure to be here, Dennis. If, uh, if you uh, threw out the word uh, Switzerland, uh, m most people would free associate and they would say uh, banking and skiing. What are a couple of other things that people should know about Switzerland that are apart from those two? Okay. Well, right off the bat, peop most people also know that Switzerland is neutral. And anybody who has gone to Switzerland also knows that uh, Switzerland is a very beautiful country. Mm. But what uh, a lot of people don't know is how, how competitive we are and how innovative. If you, if you think about it, uh, Switzerland per capita has the, the highest amount of Nobel Prizes of, uh, of any country in the world. Huh. And I th I, I'm confident that this is, uh, for the most part, because of our, our top-notch educational system and our, our uh, research facilities that we have, top-notch universities, and also because we attract a lot of uh, research, a lot of uh, brain power from, from abroad. Switzerland has traditionally been a very open society, about uh, 20, oh, 23 percent of our population is, is foreign born, and which means that we attract a lot of talent from, uh, from the rest of the world, and uh, mainly from Europe, but also from, from other parts of the world. You uh, used the word education in mm -hmm. your answer right there. What, what makes the education system there so unique? I firmly believe that, that part of our success story really is that we have this apprenticeship system. About two-thirds of our young people do not go to university. Mm -hmm. They go to vocational educational training, which means that uh, two days a week they go to school where they learn math and languages and uh, accounting, whatever their, their uh, field of specialization may be. And three days uh, a week they go to, to, uh, to a co they work in a company where they learn a trade. Uh -huh. And uh, that makes for a very skilled, a very flexible workforce, and that can uh, also weather economic downturns very, very well. And obviously there's, there's different factors that go into this, but I, I'm, I'm sure that this is also, this educational system that we have is part of the reason why we have uh, only right now 2.8% unemployment wow, yeah. and also very, very low, comparatively speaking, very low youth unemployment, which of course is, is crucial. Mm. Um, number one in competitiveness. Uh, I read that someplace uh, attributed to some the World Economic Forum big organization. Right, right. What does that mean, uh, number one, in competitiveness? Well, it, it's uh, as always when you have these kind of statistics. There's a, a number of factors that go into this, but it's it's uh, one of the the main reason uh, we are so competitive is because we add a lot of value to whatever it, we import and, and re-export. And again, it, it, I, I think our educational system has a lot to do with it, but um, we don't have any natural resources in Switzerland. We have other than water, with which we produce about 60% of our electricity, mm. but, and, and brain power. And uh, so we try to use our brain power that we have as, uh, as effectively as, uh, as, as possible. And I think that's, that has really, over time, that has helped us to, to, uh, to, to be become one of the most competitive, if not the most competitive country in the world. How about uh, the, uh, the pillars that drive the economy? Uh, we would know, as I said at the top, uh, banking, uh, insurance is in there someplace, tourism, obviously. Uh, manufacturing, that would surprise some folks. What are you manufacturing and what are you exporting? Well, actually, our industrial output is, uh, is eight times higher than, than China's per capita. And it's, it's twice as high as, as the United wow. States. And uh, we do have a, a fairly uh, important manufacturing base. Again, I think be a, m mostly because of the dual educational system that we, mm -hmm. that, that we have. Mm -hmm. We have been able mm -hmm. to, to keep a manufacturing base in our country based on, on, on high, highly skilled, uh, based on a highly skilled workforce. And so that's, that's one of the pillars, one of, an important pillar. Uh, of course, exports is uh, incredibly important. Uh, exports of 
primarily pharmaceuticals, of uh, fine tools, heavy machinery that I mentioned, um, financial products, jewelry, uh, watches. Th those are the, 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 uh, the pillars of our export industry, which is, accounts for 50% of our GDP. So every, as we sometimes say, every other franc we earn abroad. Population is about what? About 8 million. 8 million people. And the culture is amazing because you've got three or four different cultures going on at the same time. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, of course, it, it, the way Switzerland has evolved through history, we have... Uh, You're right in the middle of everybody, in, aren't you? We're in the middle of everybody, <laughs> that's right, yes. Yeah, we have, of course, uh, the, the majority is, is uh, German-speaking, then we have a uh, French speaking a part of the country and an Italian speaking part of the country. And then uh, a, a Romance speaking part of the country, that's a, a Romance language spoken by about 25,000 uh, people as, uh, as native speakers. And uh, so we have, yes, we do have a, we, we, we do belong not, not only linguistically to, to different parts of, uh, of Europe, but also culturally. And as you travel through Switzerland, you can very much see the differences as you go from one linguistic area to the, to the so other. So when you say see the differences, what would we see that would be different? You would see it in, in the architecture. The, wow, the, the, oh, the, interesting. The, the way, the way um, churches are, are built, for example, and there are, there are very uh, the, the significant differences. Wow. Uh, let's hold on that note. i got a lot, a lot of questions I want to ask you. Uh, we take a little break right about now. We're talking with the ambassador of the Swiss Confederation. That's the, the right. accurate term. Mm -hmm. We're talking with the ambassador. Back on the other side, this is America. This is America is made possible by the National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. Poonsan Corporation, forging a higher global standard. The CTC Foundation, AFO Communications, and the Rotondaro Family Trust. So, uh, Ambassador, paint a, a picture in, in, in our minds of the bordering countries. So, because you've just mentioned we've got, uh, we got uh, three major cultures functioning, which is fascinating. So, surround us with all of the It's landlocked, right? So, you've got everybody on everybody's side. Yes. We have, of course, Germany to the north. We have uh, France to the west. We have Italy to the south. And we have Liechtenstein and Austria to the east. Mm. So um, population, you said eight million. How many people? Well, so you got uh, mountains, mountains, and a kind of a basin in there someplace. That's correct. Is that yes. where most of the people would? That's be? where most people live between the, the lake of uh, Geneva and the lake of Constance. You got you got all lakes all over the place, huh? That's true. Lakes yes, and yeah. mountains. Huh? Yes, it's very pretty. Um, capital city is Bern. Bern, mm -hmm. but. Uh, then, so how many people would be in Bern? About 120,000. So it's fairly small. It's small. But that's where the seat of the government is? That's right. But yes. the two big world-class cities that everybody knows would be uh, Geneva and uh, Zurich. Zurich. Right. Um, home to many, many organizations, huh? Particularly Geneva, yes, in terms of um, international organizations, governmental organizations, non-governmental organizations. Geneva is, is, of course, one of the, the world capitals. Mm. So uh, Red Cross, uh, United Nations, World Health Organization, the list goes on and on and on. Right. Why, is it because of the central location or because of the, the beauty of the cities or what? Well, it really started with uh, Geneva being the, the second headquarters of the United Nations. Uh, and uh, that was uh, established uh, after after World War II, and uh, if you if you'd like to go even further back, the, the League of Nations, which was uh, formed after World War One, was mm -hmm. also in in, uh, in Geneva, 
And uh, so it's, um, and, and then of course everything else more or less developed around this, uh, this core of uh, United Nations organizations. But why are we so late in coming into the United Nations? And that was only 2002, that's only 10 years ago. Yes. That why, I, why, why was that? And, and was the United Nations folks operating in Geneva even before you came on board? Of course, yes. And, and uh, the folks operating at the United Nations in Geneva were, were very much liked and uh, there was no, no opposition to the United, Na United Nations as, uh, as such. But um, until the early 2000s, people felt in Switzerland that being a member of the United Nations would be, a, would be incompatible with our uh, status as a, as a neutral country. Oh, that's right, because that's, that, if there was another thing, when we were talking about three things people don't know, well, they probably should know that that uh, armed neutrality was the phrase that I picked up, has been going on for a couple hundred years, huh? Right, and it actually goes back to, to what he just mentioned before. Uh, we are, um, the, the, the neighboring countries, if you go th um, through European history, had been at war with each other, uh, over the centuries many, many times. And uh, for Switzerland, having these distinct um, linguistic regions, we were always at, uh, at great danger of being sucked into those wars. Uh -huh. So being neutral wasn't, wasn't really a, a sign of indifference to, to the, uh, the, the, the conflicts in the area or trying to, to stay out of it so much as a, as a, a matter of internal cohesion. In World War One and World War Two, how do you how do you avoid getting invaded? In uh, World War Two, eventually, the uh, the German army probably would have evaded that uh, at, at some point, but fortunately, it didn't it didn't come to that, and the war was over before before that happened. Does does did Switzerland have to have some kind of a, a relationship or concessions or anything else like that to avoid that? Well, the, um, S Switzerland uh, was a um, was in a very difficult situation at the time, uh, as you as you said. It was uh, it is not only landlocked, but it was uh, during World War II. It was uh, completely surrounded by the Axis uh, country: uh, Germany, of course, in the north; Italy in the south; uh, France yeah. uh, and Austria. Uh, France was was occupied, so it was very difficult to to survive because uh, all all the imports had to go through enemy territory, if you will. So they, it, it, it this. We, we could have not have survived without making certain concessions to, in order to, to be able to, to, uh, to import oil and whatever we needed, energy, uh, e even food. So that might have stemmed the invasion as well. That may have stemmed the invasion, plus, uh, as you said, we had already at that point, our, our uh, neutrality was, was armed. And we were through the through history. We had a reputation of, of having a fairly effective. And, and that and serves you very well because a lot of times you you hear about uh, countries going through Switzerland as a mediator uh, in some kind of disputes. It, do, do they do a lot of stuff for like behind the scenes? Well, uh, just to go back to to World War Two, you you are familiar today with with our our uh, mandate that we have for the United States to represent U.S. interests in Iran, for example, and oh, and, see? and in good. Cuba. Yeah, yeah. But in, in World War Two, we actually we had thirty five mandates like that. Ooh. We represent the interests of of thirty five countries in other countries that were at uh, at war with each other. And even in the, in the seventies, there were still uh, two dozen mandates of that nature that we had. Well, you're walking a tightrope because one of the things I read suggested that uh, actually uh, maybe the Allies mistakenly bombed some areas of Switzerland. Is that correct? That actually, that did happen. There is uh, one part of, of northern Switzerland, that uh, the canton of Schaffhausen, that, that uh, it, it generally our, our border with Germany is the Rhine. But there is one part in an exclave uh, of, of Swiss territory that sticks out into into Germany, and um, there is the the assumption that the pilots got this wrong and they they wow. bombed that part of uh, of Switzerland, assuming that it was uh, part of Germany. You oh that's fascinating. You used the word just a moment ago, Canton. Canton yes. is that like a state? It's like a state. A yes. state. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how many are there? Twenty six. Twenty six. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm fascinated with the government. Uh, so we cover a little culture, a little economy. Uh, it's a very um, I don't know 
want to say wealthy because that doesn't sound right, but it's the GDP f per person is is very high, isn't it? I mean, it's it's a it's about forty five thousand dollars. Yes, is that right? Mm -hmm. Forty five. So uh, forty five a, a piece. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, the government fascinates me. Direct democracy. What does that mean in our language? You got a president, you got a parliament, but the people are involved, aren't they? Yes, it, it means that at, at the end of the day, all important questions are decided by, by the people. And there's uh, essentially there's two institutions that make up this, uh, this uh, direct democracy. One is what we call a referendum, which means that once parliament has passed a law, if, uh, if you collect 50,000 signature, signatures, you can force a, a referendum, a, a popular vote on, on the law. And if a majority of the people, the voting population, thinks it's, it's a bad law, then it will be repealed. If, if the majority votes against the law, then it will be repealed. The, the second um, mechanism is the, the constitutional initiative. And there, if you, if you want to introduce a new concept, for example, to get rid of plastic bottles, mm -hmm. um, then you can collect 100,000 signatures, and if you manage to do so within a, a, a certain limit of time, there's, uh, then it, you can again force a ballot, and if you, if you win, if the, the population, the majority of the voting population backs your idea, then it will be put in the Constitution. So you're not a member of the EU. You're not. No. And uh, probably thank your lucky stars on a given day for not being part of the EU, because it's troubled, huh? Well, there's, there's uh, pros and cons to, to everything. I mean, they, they, granted, there would be certain advantages uh, for being, uh, particularly in, 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 in the exchange, uh, the, uh, in freedom of services, for example. I mean, there's a specific trade, areas trade. in trade. Um, uh, not so much trade, because there we have, we have agreements. We have... Uh, oh, that's right, you do. We have about 120 agreements with the, the European Union. Mm -hmm. And uh, the free movement of labor, if, if you are a, a European Union citizen and you have a, a, a contract to work in Switzerland, then you can move to Switzerland without work visa. I mean, th these, th th these exchanges are fair, fairly well is established. Mm -hmm. But uh, one, one area, we don't have a, an agreement in, in services, for example. So it, it specifically, there, are, there would be advantages to, to being an EU member. But overall, um, so far, the, the, the people have, uh, have in, in opinion polls, have voiced their, uh, their, their opposition. And uh, again, I would, I would imagine that uh, our, our Direct democracy, our system of direct, direct democracy would probably be one of the reasons because we would delegate, obviously, a, a fair amount of, of, uh, of power to, to Brussels. And we couldn't, of course, we couldn't afford to have these popular votes on issues that are ah, really decided yes, in, yes, in yes, Brussels. Yes, 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 you'd be, hold, be, be beholden to them. Right. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, put on the table uh, banking in Switzerland. What are the myths? What are the facts? What has changed over the last 10 or 15 years? Well, I, I would say that the most important changes have happened over the last uh, couple of years. Mm. And there has been uh, controversy, particularly also um, over, over tax evasion. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have, a, a few years ago, we, the, the government decided that, that to, to do away with this myth if you will, and uh, that uh, our banks could only accept money that is absolutely clean, and that also measures would be sure. put in place to, uh, to do that, to ascertain that, uh, that there, there would be no, no reason to, to perpetuate this, uh, this myth, and, and uh, that we would have an absolutely clean financial center in, in Switzerland. That, that policy was put in place about uh, three years ago. And what a lot of people don't know about Switzerland that I get from my reading is that you've been very proactive in returning money to countries that have had uh, dictators and things like that. Can you, can you educate us on that? Sure. N no other country in the world has returned more assets, stolen assets, assets from, from dictators than, uh, than Switzerland. That, mm -hmm. uh, again, was uh, particularly came to... Um, uh, uh, to pass 
in connection with the Arab Spring. Switzerland mm -hmm. one of, was one, one of the first, in some cases, the, the first country that uh, froze assets of, uh, of some of those uh, dictators and is now in, in uh, close negotiations with, with uh, countries like uh, Tunisia, and, uh, but also uh, Egypt for the, the return of those assets. And that is really, that's, that is a very good story, and that's mm -hmm. a good story that is uh, universally recognized that we are really today one of the leaders in returning assets of so-called politically exposed persons, dictators, mm -hmm. uh, international criminals, and uh, what, what have you. You have a background in law and uh, also uh, in the Foreign Service. As a kid, well, it's a question I have in my mind. As a kid, how many Swiss Army knives did you have? <laughs> that, everybody knows Swiss Army knives, right? That's right. Well, at, at that time, did you it have was, a collection? I, I probably did have a collection. I, it wasn't as necessary to have it today. You need a collection because every time you, you go to, through airport security, they take it away from you. Oh, that's true. So that was a little easier back then. When I was growing up, you could actually you could probably board a plane with a, with a pocket sure. knife in your uh, in, in, in your pocket. But uh, yes, I mean that's. Uh, but I, I I never thought that I, I would be a diplomat. That was uh, a, a thought that developed relatively late in life after I had already started a, a professional career as a as a lawyer in uh -huh. Phoenix, Arizona. Actually. Yes, as a matter of fact. And you went to Duke, right, for a while. I, I got a master's at uh, Duke Law School. That's correct. And, uh -huh. and uh, then I uh, landed a job in, in Phoenix, Arizona, with a with a law firm there, and then practiced law there for a couple of years. When you are here in the United States, what do you like most about the United States? I have to say the people. Uh huh. And uh, that is also I, I tell anybody and everybody if if, if I really have uh, a lot of fun in my in my uh, profession in my job here, apart from all the the challenges obviously that are uh, associated with it. Um, it is because uh, people are so open, they're communicative, they're enthusiastic, optimistic, and it's just, uh, it's, a, it's a nice, it's a very nice environment to work in. Mm. And when you're away from Switzerland, what do you miss most about being away from Switzerland? Being away from Switzerland? Yeah. Well, of course, it's, it's uh, friends and family, and yeah. uh, it's, uh, we st I've, I've lived all in all about for 15 years in the United States. My wife, as you know, is uh, yeah. from this country. And, uh, but of course, we, uh, my roots are, are still very much in, in Switzerland and uh, in, in terms of, of, of emotional ties to the, the scenery, to, to cities and, yeah. and, and, uh, and, and the mountains, of course, where I learned how to ski, like most Swiss. And, uh, but also uh, in, in, in terms of, of relationships, it, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's who I am. Uh -huh. I'm Swiss. As we uh, come to the uh, close, tell me a little bit uh, just about your mission as ambassador now, what's, what's, what's on your plate, and uh, specifically the important relationship between Switzerland and the United States. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, as any any diplomat, sometimes we're we're called upon to to put out fires, to in bilateral relations. Uh, you mentioned the the financial area, although I'm I'm very optimistic that we'll be able to to resolve uh, outstanding a few outstanding issues that we still that we still have. And then, of course, we have a, a lot of delegations uh, that come mm -hmm. from Switzerland, and uh, we we arrange for meetings with them, with Congress, with the administration. But uh, apart from that, our, our main, main task here is just to, to tell a good story. Mm. And uh, so many good stories to, to tell. And, and of course, uh, first and foremost, about our, our relationship with uh, our relations with uh, the United States. We were at, at some point in the, the 19th century, we were called sister republics because mm. of the, 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 the similar constitutional makeup and, uh, and similar history. That we that we had, but uh, but today our our uh, relationships are so close, particularly in the, in the economic area. Switzerland is a uh, Swiss companies make uh, Switzerland one of the, the largest investor here in the United States. If you think about it, eight million people, and we were in 2010 in in terms of capital flow in, in investments. Uh, Switzerland was the, the, the largest investor here in the United States of new investments in, wow. in, uh, in capital flows. And uh, in, in 2011, I believe we were, we were number two. So it's, it's, we have, a, as you 
can imagine we have a big stake in, in a prosperous U.S. economy as well. We're doing our best. We're doing mm. our best. Thank you. Uh, I've never been to Switzerland. Mm. I'd love to go. If you were the tour director, you took off your ambassador's hat, you put on your tour director's hat. Which I have done. You have done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that begs a question, but what would you have us see if we were there for two or three days? Well, in two or three days, you can see pretty much everything in, in, in Switzerland. Uh, and I would, I would probably take you, well, I would certainly take you to the mountains. On a, on a beautiful day, I have to say, to, 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 to drive along the, the lake of, of Thun and see the, the mountains in the background and the oh. deep blue lake, it's just really, really breathtaking. It's, it's beautiful. Then I would probably show you a couple of cities. You have to see Zurich, you have to see uh, Geneva, Lucerne. Um, so I, I would, I can guarantee you, I could fill your two or three days. <laughs> thank you, Ambassador. We're at the end of our time. I thank you for the education. A thrill You're to welcome. learn about the country and also about its important relationship with the United States. Mr. Ambassador, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. For information about my new book, The Chance of a Lifetime, an online video for all This Is America programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net. And now you can follow us on Facebook. This is America is made possible by the National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. Poonsan Corporation, forging a higher global standard. The CTC Foundation, AFO Communications, and the Rotondaro Family Trust.